Hi, welcome to Team 4's presentation of a potential styrene plant in the Gulf Coast that we've been researching over the past couple months. My name is Edward Sinecki, and my teammates are Nicholas Egan, Danielle Hand, Olivia Hanflam, Lipika Gadila, Brian Smith, and Natalie Thomas. The scope of this presentation will cover three main points. The first being background information about uh, both our raw materials and our products. The next will be a brief process overview in our plant. And then finally, an economic evaluation of our plant. The proposed styrene plant would be built on Knit Lion Chemicals Houston campus. The reason for this is that the current plant that is also on the Houston campus produces a crude C4 stream that would be the raw material used to make styrene in this process. Since the um, crude C4 stream is already in the Houston facility, the transportation cost would be very low to get them into our plant. Um, the crude C4 stream that we'd be receiving from our other plant is, contains about 50% butadiene. This butadiene by itself is worthless. There's not much market for it as not many products can be made from it. However, through a series of reactions, we are able to turn that butadiene into styrene which does have a much higher uh, market demand and many uses. As well as styrene, we are also able to convert many of our waste streams into fuel that we are able to receive a fuel credit for. The global demand for styrene has been increasing uh, over the last few years, especially in developing countries, and it is used to make a whole host of materials, including uh, polystyrene, styrene polymers, latex, and rubber. This is why we looked into the possibility of creating styrene in our plant. All hard and soft specifications for the process have been met except the conversion of vinyl cyclohexene to styrene. The reason for this is due to the selectivity of vinyl cyclohexene to styrene in the second reactor. Of the specifications that are met, most notably the styrene product purity is at 99.8%. Additionally, the total conversion of butadiene to styrene uh, specification is met. Um, the reboiler heat duty per pound of product has been met, and also all stream composition specifications have been met. This includes both recycle uh, streams back to the reactors as well as the oxygen composition, um, oxygen in the process, or oxygen in the, what's the word? Oxygen in the presence of hot organic materials can be a flammability risk, and therefore the specification was very important to me. Um, process issues that were dealt with were typically high operating conditions, the polymerization of styrene, as well as uh, corrosive materials in the process. Um, reactor 2 reaches very high temperatures of about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, and therefore a cooling system uses Dow Therm oil in order to control this temperature. The polymerization of styrene um, was dealt with by designing an inhibitor system which introduces about 50 ppm of 4 terabutyl catechol into the process at various points. Additionally, with an increase in temperature, styrene polymerization risk is likely to increase, and so all towers were designed to operate below 400 degrees Fahrenheit and styrene storage is kept to, is refrigerated to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, corrosive materials in the process could include deionized water and benzoic acid, so there was careful consideration in designing equipment to be made with stainless steel uh, where this is relevant. Um, environmental issues in the process primarily include um, specifications on wastewater compositions. Um, wastewater was pH and pressure adjusted as necessary to enter the sewage system. Additionally, the organic fraction in the wastewater stream was, the spec for that was met. Um, particularly, or, um, hazardous chemicals in the process include styrene and ethyl benzene, as styrene is a known carcinogen. So special considerations for specifications on the composition of these products in the wastewater stream were met. In order to illustrate how styrene is produced, we broke our process down into three phases. The first phase includes the first reaction and the purification of vinyl cyclohexene, also known as VCHX. 
Initially, our crude feed is sent into an extractive distillation system in order to remove the butadiene from the other C4s. Then, the purified butadiene is sent into reactor 1 along with a butadiene recycle stream, which is contaminated with VCHX, and the reaction is done in the liquid phase where butadiene is converted into VCHX with high selectivity. We do purge a small amount of C4 so that flow rate does not build up. Then, the VCHX is sent to a mixer to safely mix with oxygen so that it can react for the second reaction. For the second part of our process, it involves the second reaction and the, and the removal of non-condensables and water. Into our second reactor, we send the oxygen-rich VCHX stream, a VCHX recycle, a styrene recycle, and a water recycle. The water steam is necessary to act as a heat sink and to lower the concentration of oxygen in the reaction. The reaction is in the vapor phase and VCHX reacts with oxygen in order to create styrene and water. After reactor 2, the product stream is sent to a three-phase separator. The vapor stream goes to a flash drum so that vaporized styrene isn't escaped from the process. Benzoic acid is removed from the water stream and the styrene stream is sent to distillation column 3 where a water-rich styrene stream is sent back to reactor 2. Then the styrene proceeds to distillation column 4, where more water is removed. Then it goes to distillation column 5, where the majority of the styrene product is received from the bottoms. Next, the stream goes to distillation column 6, where at the top, a VCHX recycle is returned to reactor 2. And then distillation column 7, finally, our final styrene product stream is recovered. So now we're going to take a look at the total capital cost of the plant. The total plant costs about $1.4 billion, with the total contractor cost being $800 million. 82% of this total contractor cost came from the total IBLs. As you can see from the graph, we split the IBL into extractive distillation IBL and other IBL. The extractive distillation IBL made up, of, made up half of the total IBL which is an enormous cost and it was given to us as a fixed cost and was scaled up for our plant. So now the, this chart shows the other IBL costs. This cost consisted of um, heat exchangers, drums, towers, reactors, and miscellane miscellaneous items such as oxygen mixers, resin, and catalysts. The heat exchangers made up the uh, majority of our other IBL costs, which makes sense due to the large flow rate. Additionally, we needed surge drums throughout our process. This chart shows the rest of the total contractor costs, or the outer battery limit costs. This outer battery limit cost consisted, consisted of raw material and product storage, site development, and utilities. The majority of the OBL um, was uh, was from the utilities. This made sense to us because we needed a lot of heating and cooling throughout our system, again, due to the large amount of heat exchangers and also regeneration systems. The total ongoing costs for 2018 amounted to $600 million a year. 65% of this was attributed to purchasing raw materials. As you can see, we split up the raw materials into other raw materials and crude C4s to show how large the crude C4s was for our total raw materials. The second largest component of this was utilities, um, which was the only controllable component of this chart. When construction begins in 2018, our cumulative cash flow is just under negative $200 million and continues to decrease until 2021 when we begin to start up our plant. From there, it increases every year until it hits full capacity in 2024 and becomes net positive in 2026. It continues to increase till shutdown in 2036, where we end with a net cash flow of $415 million. Our proposed plant is currently not profitable, so we would need to sell styrene far above market value if we were to make a profit. Currently, our ATRR is 5.6%, which is well below the hurdle rate of 20%. Additionally, our net present worth 
is negative $240 million, far below the consideration value of $30 million. The net back, our current value is 3.6 cents per pound of styrene, which is again far below the 21.4 cents per pound needed to meet the hurdle rate proposed by Netline Chemicals. We conducted a few sensitivity studies on our model to see how an increase in certain factors would affect our plant. One of them that we did was the price of crude oil in dollars per barrel and how it would affect our ATRR. Looking at this graph, we can see that as the price of crude oil increases, our ATRR value decreases, showing that the inverse relationship would mean that as crude oil decreases in price, our ATRR would increase and provide our plant with higher profits. Another sensitivity analysis we completed involved looking at the profitability of the plant over a reasonable range of natural gas prices. We find that as the price increases, the profitability of the plant decreases. Although the plant produces significant amounts of vapor and liquid fuel, this gain is offset by the increased costs associated with steam and other energy using utility services. In order to increase the profitability of the plant, five alternative scenarios were considered. Three of those were found to increase the plant ATROR, including selling ethyl benzene, benzaldehyde, and propylene, which are all side products of the styrene production reaction. A scenario in which we replaced the reactor one coolant with Dow Therm A was found to be highly unprofitable. And another scenario where we further purify our wastewater was also found to be non-profitable. In the first scenario, ethyl benzene is purified and sold for 68 cents per pound. Ethyl benzene has a large market as a precursor to various polymers and monomers, including styrene. Adding this option would increase plant ATROR from 5.6 to 7.1%. Additionally, VCHX that would otherwise be considered waste would be collected and returned to reactor two, increasing styrene production. So alternative case two involves purifying and selling benzaldehyde at 59 cents per pound. And our plant this mounted to 3,090 pounds per hour, and it raised our ATROR from 5.6 to 8.2%. And the current market for benzaldehyde, it's a, very, it's a precursor to various chemicals, and it also has an almond-like um, aroma, so it's um, added to various food products. Alternative case three involves purifying and selling polymer-grade propylene at 39 cents per pound. This in our process was 1,100 uh, pounds per hour, and it raised our ATROR from 5.6 to 6%. Um, this case did reduce the C4 vapor fuel credit, but um, even with that, it was still profitable, which you can see by it raising the ATROR. So since none of these profitable alternative cases conflicted with each other, if they were all combined together, they would raise the ATROR from 5.6% to 9.6%, which is still under um, the threshold of 20% that we would want to achieve. So on, only with a 52% um, capital reduction or a 15 cent per pound net back would we um, recommend construction of the plant right now. Um, but to get those changes that um, we would need in order to recommend this. Um, one thing that could be done is looking more into the extractive distillation, um, reducing that capital and utilities cost. As we said before, it was an extremely large amount, so we could do more um, you know, optimization of that. Also, our utilities were a very large cost for the plant, but we could further optimize um, like heat exchanger utilities by incorporating process streams um, into heat exchangers. And lastly, um, the benzoic acid waste removal was also um, very costly, so we could try to optimize that more to reduce costs for that as well. 
Um, so like we said before, we unfortunately do not recommend um, construction of this plant. And thank you very much.